All right, so this is going to be part two to what if Deku had manifest. So with that being said, let's just roll the intro. All right, so before we get started with this, what if I'd like to say that pretty soon I'm going to start my own kind of series. It's not going to be like a what if, it's going to be like a... Uh, kind of original i guess it's gonna be set in the my hero kind of world and it's gonna be called ua uh year one and basically it's gonna be a story about um a student who goes to ua on its first year that of uh, being a school so this story would take place around um uh, between 100 and 200 years before uh the start of the anime so yeah it's going to be around the time of the second generation of Quirk users. And yeah, so if you want to be a part of the series and you want to kind of contribute in ways, um, then you can go to my Discord and there you could put um, some story, uh, not really story points. Um, you could put your like original characters and I might add, add them to the story since I would need to, I need a lot since the uh, kind of story I want to go for. I'm not going to reveal too much, but for the way I want the story to go, I kind of needed all the characters. So if you're going to, you know, uh, you know, give a character, don't make it overpowered since this is the second generation of Quirk users. And yeah, so I'm not gonna take characters that are really overpowered or have, you know, supernatural elements to them. So it's not like they could be other races other than, you know, human. So yeah, so try to keep it simple. And if I like the idea, then I might put them in the kind of uh, a story. So, yeah, just uh, if you want to be a part of it, like I said, go down to the description or my community tab or the about section on my YouTube and join my Discord. And then you could post it in the uh, UA one year, year one or whatever uh, kind of section of my Discord. And yeah. So with that being said, let's get into the what if. So before we uh, get to the story, um, so I'm gonna show what the kind of hero costume for Deku would look like. It's basically going to be like um, Tamaki's, but the difference is that his cloak is going to be black and uh, what was gold is now uh, purple and what was purple is now gold. And his kind of armor that he wears on the leaf is now white. So it's basically an inverse of his colors. So yeah. So in the last part, we just got done with the kind of entry exam. And um, the kind of beginning part of their lives. Right? Uh, so yeah. So our story would start off on the kind of... Um, I guess the week before they get into UA. So Deku would be kind of nervous, right? He would want to see if you got into UA. Um, his brother would reassure him and be like, you know, you, you took out a lot of robots and you saved that one girl. I'm pretty sure you're going to get in uh, Midoriya or Izuku because this would be Tamaki talking to him. And he would be like, you're right. I'll just have to wait. And this is when uh, Deku's mom, uh, Inko, would actually give him the letter and uh, Deku would go run to his room to kind of open it to see if he won or got in so he would get this kind of uh, disc and this disc would project or have a hologram of all might and all might would tell him like uh young midoriya or i guess his, his last name would not be midora uh he'd be like young izuku you were the uh top student this year you were able to get not only top in the villain points or i guess uh you know, destroying robots, but you also got hero points as well. You were the only student there to get hero points this year. You were able to save that young girl's life from uh, being ended by the uh, zero pointer. And for that, I commend you. So I'd like to welcome you to the hero academia. I'll see you next week. Right. And that's when the uh, transmission would turn off and uh, Deku would be really happy that I think he'd probably start crying. At this point, um, this is when Tamaki and Inko would come through and be like, what's wrong? And he'd be like, oh, I just got accepted. And they would all be happy about it. 
So we could skip to the next week and this is when Deku would be walking into school and into class. So he would walk in and then the first people he would see would be Ida and Bakugo. And Bakugo sees Deku and he wants he's very angry that he was that he got in. And also he kind of ignores Ida who was been who's been yelling at him to put his feet down. So yeah. As he's about to go and approach uh, Deku, this is when Ida kind of cuts him off. And Ida basically says that he was sorry for being rude to him at the, um, what's it called? At uh, the kind of practical exam. And he, he like, um, praises him for seeing that there was other conditions other than just destroying robots. And Deku would be kind of confused and be like, what do you mean? And then he remembers what All Might said about the hero points and he'd be like oh you mean the uh hero points and he's like yes you know i was a fool for not even considering that if uh, you know if circumstances were different i would have helped that um the young lady too but i didn't see past my own score and deku would be like you know it's okay right just that you know what you did wrong and it's a fine so yeah after this, this is when another person would walk through the door, and this would be, um, Odoraka. Odoraka would go up to Deku, kind of tap him on the so shoulder, and basically thank him for saving him on that day. Deku would turn around and basically say, like, oh, it was no deal. It was, like, no problem, you know, um, just remember to, uh, you know, be wary of your surroundings. And next time you won't be in that situation. So after that was done, uh, this is when a kind of person in a sleeping bag will come through. And it turned out that that's actually their home teacher, Aizawa. The kids aren't really, um, that's hard for them to believe that that's their teacher. But then he tells them that instead of going to orientation, they're actually going to do a quirk assessment. And whoever does the worst actually gets expelled. So everyone's kind of freaking out like they're like oh my gosh you can't do that like you know that's really unfair and this is when he would be like no like i'm i could basically do anything i want you way uh teachers have their own way of teaching and this is mine so you better do your best so after this was done everyone would get ready and um this is when they go outside in their pu uniforms so yeah so, uh, for the kind of demonstration, they would use Deku since he got number one um, in the in the first kind of uh, test. So, he would try to go up there, and this is when Bakugo would make a fuss, like, "What? How did that um, shitty nerd get you know get in front of me?" Like, right? He'd be like, "How did he get number one? It doesn't make sense." And I, I was always like, "Fine." go and throw the ball i don't care just someone do it so uh deku would just walk back in line and bakugo would walk up to the kind of plate uh with a smile on his face kind of um looking as if he won something over deku so he would uh at first i saw would tell him to throw it normally and it would get around i believe 70 meters i think something like that and then he would tell him to use her quirk and when he did, he would get around uh, 700 meters. So after that was done, uh, he would basically explain why there's a big difference between just using your, your normal power and using your quirk. And you haven't been using your quirk your fullest because of how society, you know, functions uh, and how they restrict your quirk usage. So after that was done, they would continue with the rest of the test. So what Deku does is um when he gets to the kind of uh to the race part let's go with that one first uh so deku i got this idea from a comment uh about how deku should eat insects which uh kind of makes sense since insects have a lot of advantages and they're pretty small and they're easy to carry so uh they would get kind of uh ready for the kind of um the race right and Deku would pull something out of his pocket and it would be like this little 
kind of uh, bag and inside of it would be a dried uh, grasshopper or cricket I'm not sure which um, but basically it's one of those kind of um, weird kind of foods that you could buy online or at a store sometimes and they're kind of uh, dried out kind of bugs I know it kind of it is kind of a disgusting but it does give him a big advantage so Deku would eat one and he'd be able to transform his legs bottom parts to um, to kind of the legs of that of a grasshopper so he'd be able to kind of jump farther and get a better score so i don't think he would um get the top score with this i think he would get around second place and then third would be Todoroki and fourth would be bakugo so yeah so after that was done they would get to the kind of next part and this is the um this would be the grip strength, I guess. And this is where Deku would also take something out to eat. Since uh, he didn't really have that much to eat for breakfast. So this is when he eats a piece of squid. And this is where he actually uses... Uh, he gets tentacles, right? And he uses tentacles to uh, squeeze down the kind of grip strength uh, kind of tester. And he would get first place in that. So, we get to the uh, ball throw, right? So, Deku does not have one for all in this one. And, yeah. So, what he would do in this uh, scenario, he has he is kind of built, right? He is um, a little bit... Phys he's a lot more physically built than he is in canon since he was training. And training with someone who had a similar quirk or the same quirk as him. So what he would do is that he would transform his um, entire arm into uh, tentacles and basically he would create um, uh, the uh, end of his tentacles would be the clam hand and basically it would be like kind of like a catapult using his arm as the catapult if you know what I mean. So I think in this one he would get around... Uh, around two kilometers with this one so that's 2,000 meters so it's not the best but it's uh he doesn't get number one but i would think he would get number two since bakugo was the one who got around 700 meters and he won he was one of the kind of top uh people in that instance so deku would get a pretty good score bakugo would be angry thinking like he's like um he'd be like deku you think you could beat my score like just to make fun of me and this is when he would try to go up to, up to deku and aizawa would, uh, would restrict them and say like you know if you're going to use a quirk use it on your own time right but don't disturb my class so after all this was done this is when um they would choose the kind of weakest link and that would be the invisible invisible girl i think her name is hina and what would happen after this is that um uh i think in this instance deku would actually stand up for her and basically tell aizawa like you know when i was younger my quirk was considered weak and i trained every day for it to become stronger and by expelling her you're really losing out on a lot of potential right and he would just be staring at aizawa and he would basically say like huh you really are like your brother and he'd be like fine she can stay but she has to work hard right so we would get to the kind of um later in the day and this is when all might would come through and be like i am here as your combat instructor and this is when he notices like oh uh, young um izuku i didn't notice you were in this class and people will be like, what? How does he know All Might? And this is when uh, Bakugo would be like, kind of getting angry, right? But not really saying anything. And this is when All Might would be like, oh, do you guys not know? Uh, this young lad right here is actually the brother of one of the big three. That being Tamaki. And people would be amazed like, wow, you're like, you're already like, um, your siblings with the you know, one of the top three of UA. That's amazing. 
And this is when Deku would be like, yeah, my brother's amazing. He's, you know, his uh, quirk is manifest just like mine, right? He's going to be the, he's going to be one of the top heroes in the future. And, you know, people would be kind of, um, who would be kind of, um, you know, praising Deku and his brother. And Deku and um, Baku would be like, you know, what's so impressive about eating, right? That's all you do. You All you do is just eat and you become what you eat. You know, my quirk explosions a lot better, right? I need, I leave nothing behind, right? And then this is when people would kind of look at Baku like, you know, what's his, what's his problem? Why is he so angry at Deku? And Deku would just be like, oh, don't, don't listen to him. He's just, he's always been that way. And this would get um, uh, Baku really angry, but he can't really do anything because All Might's there. So... Uh, all Might would take him and he would first tell him that we already received all your kind of uh, ideas for your costumes and they've been already made. So Deku's is basically um, Tamaki's suit, just like I said before, just with inverted colors, I guess. So yeah, uh, Deku would uh, walk out with the rest of the group and they would notice... Uh, his kind of unique design and they would ask him like uh where'd you get the idea for that and he basically would say that it's just like his brothers but with different colors so after this was done they would actually uh pick the teams right or they would draw for it and they would get the same teams as in canon so it would be bakugo and ida versus uraraka and daku so yeah daku would see um he would be outside with Uraraka and looking at the plans of the building. And he would be like, all right, I think I got an idea. Uh, and he would open one of the pouches that are on his kind of uh, costume, right? And this is when he would take out a kind of uh, roasted tarantula. I know it's kind of weird, but these things do exist. So he would basically uh, just eat it. Right, and Uraraka would be seeing this, like, like Deku, he should be kind of creeped out, like, what are you doing? Like, oh, it's part of my quirk. So, after this was done, Deku would have, um, kind of multiple eyes, and he would use this to kind of heighten his senses, and he would continue to walk, uh, into the building. So, after this, uh, his senses would be enhanced from this. And this is where he could hear Bakugo coming through with the explosion. So he basically tells Uraraka to go uh, to the first floor so that um, she can go and get the bomb. So after this was done, or um, as she's trying to go up, Bakugo would try to use her his explosion to kind of block her. And Deku would go and rush him so he wouldn't have time to go for Uraraka. So, Deku would try to go for Bakugo by going with his tentacles to try to grab him. But Bakugo would be ready for this and jump out of the way. So, Deku would switch his uh, legs into um, grasshopper, grasshopper legs and then jump from wall to wall, kind of like Gran Torino. So, as he's doing this, he would spit web everywhere. Um, let's just say from his hands. Just kind of like Spider-Man since he ate that tarantula. And Bakugo wouldn't really know what he was doing. And he would rush towards um, Bakugo, right? And Bakugo would be uh, seeing like, oh, this is the perfect opportunity to use my equipment. And he would try to use his, um, he would try to release the pin from his gauntlets, right? So what Deku does is that he actually shoots his web in um, Bakugo's eyes. So... He wouldn't really know where to shoot. So this is when uh, Bakugo would get hit by Deku. And he would cause him to shoot upwards with um, the pin being removed. So that explosion would go upwards. And the same effect would happen with um, just how it was in canon. Where uh, Deku basically used one for all to kind of hit upwards. The same thing would happen just with. Bakugo um, using the explosion instead so after that was done Deku would use his web to kind of 
secure Bakugo down and use the tape to uh, go around him to get him out. And Uraraka would be able to get the bomb since everything would be floating and she'd be able to use the debris as projectiles. So they would have won that kind of uh, fight against um, Bakugo and Ida. So uh, before we end this, uh, I did get a comment about whether or not uh, he should be able to copy quirks if he eats other people's like DNA. And I never really thought about it. They never bring up this question in the series. And uh, I'll put a poll on this video so you guys can actually go and check it out. I forgot to mention this earlier, but um, yeah. So after this was done, they would get kind of praised for um, doing their working as a team. But at the same time, they would they would also get recommended for being kind of reckless, especially using explosives near a bomb. Right. So after this was done, um, Deku would have that kind of talk with All Might about whether or not he should be the bearer of one for all. So I'll put a poll on this video and see whether or not you guys want it. And yeah. Um, also, all right, let's just continue. So after this was done, uh, Deku, when they go to go choose the cast representative, people would go for Deku since they see him as a uh, kind of a big contender since his brother is part of the big three and has the same quirk as him. So he would be chosen as the kind of class representative. So I'm going to end it here. And in the next video, we're going to go over the kind of USJ. And yeah, so with that being said, it's going to be in the, the video. If you like the video, give it a like. And remember to subscribe if you want more content. So yeah, this is going to be in the, the video. So yeah.